Hello everybody, this is part two of modeling a tin can and this is where we left off in part one and I want to make a couple of small changes to this so I'm going to click on the main uh, front part or body of the can go into edit mode and I've decided that uh, I do want to make some small changes here I'm going to shift alt and click right here and I'm going to go control plus to expand my selection I'm going to scale this in a little bit, but not in the Z direction. So I'm going to go S, Shift, Z, and I'm going to hold Shift, and I'm just going to pull it in like this. And uh, we'll just go ahead and come up to the top now. And I'll do the same thing. Shift, Alt, and click, and expand my selection. And scale, Shift, Z, pull that one in as well. And now I will make sure that this is not sticking through I don't think it is and the bottom which really is not really going to be seen I'm going to scale shift Z that a little bit I think we're okay now um, another thing to keep in mind is if you didn't want to model both the top and the bottom you could potentially I'm going to shift alt and click those and I'm going to hide that stuff uh, a lot of these cans don't have a top like that. They have like the bottom. I'm going to shift D. And I'm going to bring this up. And I'll also uh, bring the cursor there. And I'll rotate Y 180. And they have a top similar to this. It might be slightly different than, uh, than the bottom. You know, but it's, you know, like that. So you could get away with something like that if you wanted to and as well um, depending on how you're going to render this you might not even have to make the bottom so that would save you you know some polys right there if you didn't have to do that okay so anyhow this is where we uh, left off and there's my can and uh, I've got an HDR image in here uh, you don't see too much of the effects providing some of the light. Um, I think what I'll do is I'm going to go Shift A and click an area lamp. And I'll bring one of these out here. I'm going to hit S and then scale it up like this. And um, let's rotate Y and I rotate in the Z and I'll face it towards there. And I'll come over to that lamp, and it's 100. I'm going to make this one, uh, I think, a cream color, like that. I'm going to get rid of this sun. I'll take this, Shift D, I'm going to copy it over here, rotate in the Z, scale it a bit differently. hard to tell without a bit more of a reflective uh, material um, but one thing I will do is see if I can uh, get these to All right, go through a bit more uh, maybe I'll take this guy and put it back here as well have a look at that in a bit now as far as materials go I'm going to select the main body of the can and we will look through the, the camera split my screen T and T and come over here to the node editor and uh, start uh, with the material now it's not going to be overly exciting this is just going to be following 
uh, this image, which I'll provide, um, which again, you can search for uh, blender, um, tin can, nodes, whatever, look in uh, Google images and you'll find some that are related to this and you'll find other uh, just renders. And then you can try out the different ones. Um, this is one that I found that I liked with a, just a couple of small changes. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and start just laying this down. And uh, this may not be the perfect texture, but it looks kind of cool and I like it. So uh, I'm going to do it this way. So I need a mix shader, Fresnel, anisotropic, and, and a multiply um, color node. So mix for now. So let's just start laying these down here. So I don't need that. So shader mix. I know I'm going to need an input for now. And I know that's going to go into the fact. And I need um, a shader. And it's a tropic. And I think it's a color mix RGB that I'm going to need with multiply set okay the color is going to go into the displacement and uh, isotropic is going to go into the shader there so that's going to go into shader and this is going to go into displacement i know that this is going to be a darkish color i believe and the fact is going to be 0 0.025. You can experiment with that. 0 0.025. Zoom in a bit on that. Okay, I'm going to set this to 0 0.4 or so. All right, so what else we need? Okay, and then we're going to come along. We're going to need a bump and, uh, and stuff. So I'll do this part. Uh, so the Voronoi texture with the mapping notes. Okay, so we'll get on texture. And because I've got Node Wrangler enabled, I can just go Control T and I get that. And I'm not sure if I'm coming out of generated or object. I didn't UV uh, unwrap this. I had to come out of object into vector. I just found I like that a bit better. So object into vector. And uh, it's going to be set on intensity and we'll adjust the scale. I'm going to try 25 like I did in my sample there. And that's going to go into, I think it's the fact that's going to go into the roughness here of the anisotropic. Double check that. Okay, the fact into the anis roughness and also into the color too. There we go. Okay, now um, I, can, uh, I can start attaching this if we want. Won't be able to tell too much at this point. Um, so I know that I want to adjust uh, the scale of that. Let's see if you can see anything. It's starting to look a little bit metal like. I'm going to set this at 2002 and leave one. So based on the size of your model, 2002 and leave that. And then uh, we'll add the, the bump, which will make quite a bit of difference. So I know I'm going to need a vector bump. And I believe I'm going to need a uh, RGB curve. And I think this is mapping those off that. Let's see if I got that right. Oh, no, so it's a color ramp. Ah, what am I doing? Uh, I will. Let's get rid of that. We'll need noise texture, though. to um, take these values and I'm going to pinch uh, pinch them in together okay, grab that, like that something like that all right so we're going to uh, take the noise texture fact into the color ramp and then the color into the height into the color ramp and then the uh, color into the height that and then the normal is going to go into the normal of the uh, isotropic right there 
Okay, so now uh, I get left that on generated. And so we'll cut that there, generated into, into here. All right, very good. And five, five, and one for the scale here. Five. Five and one. Going good. Uh, image texture. I don't know. I'm going to fact and fact today. Oh, what do I got going on here? Okay. Uh, something else going on there. Now you can start seeing some stuff going on here. Okay, Pretty crazy. 0 0.03 and 0 0.1. Okay, so let's make sure that I got that. Let's color around to the bump. And then let's adjust the scale of the noise. So I have 205 for the detail. 200 and five. Let's look here. Let's start seeing something there. Okay, let's double check all this stuff now. I'm gonna go control arrow, up arrow. And we could zoom in a bit. Zoom in a bit, I guess. Okay, so I've got my mapping stuff into my noise texture, 205. Got this pinched together. Can mess with that. I've got my bump coming to the anisotropic. Uh, I think I want to make that a little bit of a different shade. I'm going to change that to Beckman, and I'm going to darken this up. That'll help with the image. And then just left that pretty much standard. Multiply scale of the Voronoi. Did I do that? Yes, I did. And this is 2000. Yeah. Okay. Control down arrow. Let's um, control up arrow on this. And. Um, we could do a little test render on that. Actually, I'll do control down there. Let's come over here to my render settings. Let's uh, go with 75 for now. And sampling, let's go with um, 250. I'll put on denoising. And uh, I'll give it a render. And we'll come back. We'll check it out. Here you can see the can. And I'll zoom in a little bit. And you can somewhat see the texture. Hope, hopefully you can see that there. I think I'm going to mess with the lights a little bit. And tilt this can. Uh, really tilt the camera. So let's do that. And let's get this guy. Uh, coming up a little bit more. And maybe a little bit closer. And let's set this guy at 30. And what else have we got? This one here, I'm gonna bring up, and let's make it a bit bigger. I'm gonna set this at uh, 60. That one's okay. Um, if we wanted to, we could come over to the node editor again. Select the can, and by the way, make sure that that material is applied to all of the, the parts. Okay. Select the can again, and um, is that T or is that N? Maybe the the bump here. I could make it 0.04. I'll make the distance 0.15 just to try that out. Control up arrow. Let's see if we can see that. 
Okay, and I'll probably render uh, from there. Let's close that. Okay. And that's going to be where I render it. Okay, I'm just going to do it like that. So I'm going to come over here and I'm going to uh, change some of my render settings. Not by very much. All right, I'll go ahead and I'll make, I'll make this 85. And I'll do, let's say, 350. And uh, we'll let that render and then we'll have a look. Here's my can. And you can see the texture on there, I hope. And uh, certainly the, we could do some work on the lighting, but uh, and since we modeled the bottom of the can, let's try uh, just uh, taking all of this stuff here and uh, we'll duplicate it, bring it over here. 